We get out state unemployment rates today from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, and when you add all of them up, it, it's, it's apparent that we at least created a million fewer jobs. Really? than what we'd originally thought, right? The Bureau of Labor Statistics goes off of the initial estimates, but the final, final word is on what the states tabulate. And starting with California last week, and after going through every 50 states, we know that at least 1 million fewer jobs were created in the fiscal year end at September 30, uh, 2023, um, from 3.1 million to 2.1 million jobs. and. Howell said it himself. You know, it, it, the markets are closed for Good Friday, uh, a week from uh, a week from now. But but he alluded to, you know, it looks like core PCE is headed to 2.8 percent. Bloomberg's Anna Wong says 2.7 percent, possibly below 2.5 percent by June. So it looks like all of the stars are aligning for Chair Powell. Well, I guess where does this leave the dot plot then? I mean, can we bank on three? I, th I think right now you can bank on three, and most of this is predicated on the fact that they've lowered the threshold to cut rates. Otherwise, they would have left the end of the year unemployment rate forecast at 4.1%. So what appears on its surface to be an upgrade of the current economic backdrop is was in fact a downgrade of it by lowering the year end 2024 unemployment rate target in the dot plot. To, from 4.1% to 4.0%, they're saying we just need one tenth more from 3.9% to 4%, and we're in liftoff to start cutting rates. So, do you think that? Well, let's let's just go to the other side of the equation. Inflation, kind of. Where do you think we are with inflation? Again, we saw some in headline inflation prints that got people's attention to say, oh, maybe we're going to take at the very least a bumpy ride from 3% to 2% inflation. What do you read on inflation? So um, it, it obviously has been bumpy. Uh, but what so few took away from the aggregate of the CPI and the PPI was that the components that feed into core PCE, which is the guiding light, of monetary policy, of the Federal Reserve. Uh, but that actually looks like it's going to come in cooler than what it had been anticipated because brokerage fees through the PPI came in so much lower. And that's what you have to pay attention to. Again, you know, it's gonna be me, I'm gonna be filming myself next Friday morning, everything's gonna be closed, but I'll be right there with, hey, it's 8.30 a.m. Eastern, here's <laughs> the core PCE. So I guess, what's your take on how the average American is reading the U.S. economy? Because we see a lot of reports that say, you know, there's some polls that people are pretty despondent about the situation, which becomes sort of curious given there's expectations for growth and there's pretty full unemployment or pretty, pretty full employment, I should say. So you ask, you ask the absolutely crucial question right now. If you look at the long term average of the CPI and you you, you, you kind of pull out, as we do at QI Research, essential uh, inflation, non-discretionary inflation. That's running about three percentage points higher than normal. So that really, you can throw out the window where discretionary inflation is running because your average U.S. household doesn't have enough to pay for the essentials, the gasoline, the food prices. And that's our biggest problem right now, especially because these are sources of inflation over which the Federal Reserve has absolutely zero control. So I learned many things when I listened to D Daniel DiMartino Booth. One of them is PCE core deflator comes out next Friday when the markets are closed. I didn't know that. So boy, that's, you can't do that. Whose idea was that? So it's but, good Friday. So maybe it's maybe it's 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 an even better Friday. Again, if as Anna Wong and others have have put pencil to paper and said, you know what, we're looking at something that come in at, could come in at two point seven percent. Boy, markets are really going to rally a week from Monday. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Um, so, Danielle, do you have an opinion? At it? Just that the disconnect for me is just you know, economists and folks, and I can look at my eco screen and I see generally the numbers looking pretty good for this economy. Economy's growing, inflation is coming down, uh, you know, all those things. If you want a job, you pretty much have a job, all that kind of stuff. Yet the public polls say Americans, they're just not seeing it. They don't feel it. What's the disconnect, do you think? 
You know, I think the real disconnect is the fact that we are in recession. And remember what recession is defined as. You know somebody who's lost their job. You know, at this point, we're at, I think, 250,000 job cuts through where we are today, almost heading towards the end of March. These are extraordinary numbers. And I think a lot of Americans towards last fall, when the layoff announcements had kind of dissipated and fallen down, they had said, OK, wait, coast is clear. But now whoop, we're right back to where we were with all of these layoffs being announced one company after another, as well as job openings disappearing. That's another form of mm -hmm. labor market slack opening up when you op open the Bloomberg in the morning and you're like, up oh, 2000 job openings just eliminated. Hey, my my senior in college no longer has the job they thought that they were going to have. All of these things factor into the American psyche, and rightly so, even if there's a lag time between when they hear about their kid having a job offer rescinded or when their neighbor loses their job to when it actually shows up in the data.